It's still not right. I don't know what's wrong. I've been putting off doing this work because I couldn't figure out how to make this video and I wanted to be able to share it with y'all so you understand like what's going on here and what's happening. So we're just gonna try this vlog style and see how that goes. And it's just gonna go until it's done because this is probably gonna be like 12 videos. There is a final goal for all of this, this sweater, which I will put somewhere on the screen. It is a commercially produced machine knit sweater, but it is also very iconic for obvious reasons. I want to make it on my bulky machine. The river for the brother bulky machines doesn't do the bird's eye backing for two colors of card the way that the standard gauge one does, but you can do the needle selection manually. So the plan is to do the needle selection manually and then use AYAB to control needle selection for the top bed so we can do the colors that way. But here's the thing, I am 12 yaks deep in this process. <laughs> Which I should explain. Uh, yak shaving is a term that we use in software engineering and like in coding in general. That means you're lost in the weeds. Like you set out to solve one problem and then you wind up finding another problem that impacts you and then another problem that impacts you and suddenly you find yourself out in the middle of the field shaving yaks and you don't know how you got there. Which is the irony in all of that is that if you want to harvest fiber from a yak, you do not shave it, you comb it. I don't know where this came from. Anyway, uh, when I encounter problems like these, I call them a stack of yaks because it's essentially in priority order. I have to finish the thing on top of the stack before I get to the thing next to it. So when I find myself off on a tangent, I just pop it onto the stack and it's the next thing. So the bottom of the stack is make the dude sweater. And then above that is get AYAB working on my 270, but it's got issues. There's partial support in AYAB for the 270, but it doesn't do full carriage detection. And I started implementing carriage detection and found that because the carriage has two magnets instead of one, figuring out where it is on the bed is tricky. And because of these issues with drift, in AYAB, where the whole frame of reference gets shifted off to the right, it's too hard to tell which magnet is in front of the carriage at any given time based on your direction. So we need to fix that first. I think in order to fix the carriage drift issues, I need to do some performance work and make sure that the, essentially, I'm calling it the draw loop because I have a graphics background. The thing that decides which needles are selected next needs to be more efficient in the way that it does that. I'm calling that the draw loop. So the draw loop needs to be more efficient, but I filed a GitHub ticket about the problems that I was seeing a while back and some people have done some work on it, so I don't know the current state of the project. So the top of this stack is figure out the current state of AYAB. And then after I do that, I need to figure out if I need to do more performance work or if I can move on to figuring out carriage detection. But before I do all of that, I need to get set back up for development. <laughs> we'll figure it out, it's, it's gonna happen. I will check back in when things are sorted. I looked for the GitHub issue that I filed and some of the responses on it. I don't know if this will solve all the performance issues, but it is a very minor fix that helps pick up a few more of the missed interrupt cycles and might make life a lot easier. So I'm going to pull in the patch that somebody else put together and test it on my own and see how it goes. <laughs> That's really not right. Something is wrong. I don't know if it's this change or if it's something else, so I have to revert this change and then try it again. It's really not right. Um, I don't know if it's my hardware. I don't know what it is. So I'm gonna debug and come back when things are better. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna show you what's wrong first. Come here.
Can you see that? Oh, you can see that. That's right. That's not. Turn the power on. No needle selected. Wrong needle selected. No needle selected. Wrong needle selected. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's not working. Um, <laughs> I don't know what has gone wrong. Let me turn you around. Beep, beep, beep. So I switched to my other control board thinking that maybe it was something wrong with the one that I got at Etsy and I flashed it with the unmodified version of the firmware and it's still selecting the wrong needles and I don't know why. And it's not beeping. So I'm going to, this is all on the 1.0 release. So I'm going to install the 9.5 release and make sure that it's not an issue with my hardware. I was hoping to get more done today. Look at me, progress. The 9.5 release software works, which means that it's something that I have done on my end, probably. Uh, the hardware's fine. Hardware's fine. That's always good though, because the hardware is time consuming to replace. Let me talk you through this. I forgot that the 1.0 release supports multiple machines and I had the 270 selected, so it was doing funky things with the needles. I also had some minor changes that I had made to the Python for the desktop application and that was causing problems. And now I have to deal with the, there's a bug in the 1.0 release where the needles wind up inverted for certain patterns. They were trying to do something clever by looking at the full color gamut of whatever image you give the desktop software and deciding that the most common color is going to be color zero and then the second most common color is going to be color one. They were trying to do something clever with the images intended to be used for two and three color card but it wound up causing problems for like plain old Fair Isle on the machine. So I'm commenting out a chunk of code and it'll work fine for my testing purposes. Don't do clever things, engineers, In unless you fully test them because this is how we wind up with most bugs. It's still not right, I don't know what's wrong. Oh boy, what's wrong? It's, it's, Here's the, thing. Here's the thing. I am You don't do anything. Here's the thing. I am reaching the point of diminishing returns. I know that my hardware works. I know that there is a known working point in the software. Um, but it is too late at night for my brain to work correctly, so I'm going to put this down and I'm going to go to bed because I know myself well enough to know that if I keep working on this tonight, I'm going to bang my head against the wall for a while and then not actually fix anything. But if I go to sleep and I look at this tomorrow, I'm going to figure it out in about five minutes. And I would much rather do that than like waste good sleeping time. So we're going to call it a night and I'll come back to this. But like, this is just how it's, this is just how this goes sometimes. Um, sometimes it takes an hour to get your development environment set up correctly and everything working. Uh, it's not a fun process, but that's, this is how it goes. Okay. Good night. It is a different day. It was a weekend. It is morning. I went for a run, had breakfast, am caffeinated. I'm in better shape to figure out what the hell's going on with this optimization that somebody made trying to be clever. All right, let's check in and see where we are on the stack of yaks. Uh, at the top of this right now is figuring out what is going on with needle inversion. And I don't think I'm gonna fix it right away. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna file a ticket about it, explaining what is going wrong and what I think is going on. And then I'm going to find a workaround for it and maybe come back to it and fix it later because this is not like mission critical for what I want to do ultimately. So I'm going to file that ticket. I'm going to come up with a workaround. I'm going to test out the proposed fix for the carriage drift and see if that works. 
I might hook up the uh, garter carriage and just let it run for like 20 minutes and see if I'm seeing the same issues as I was before, just to like fully test that fix and see if it works. And then we'll see where we are. I'll reevaluate the yak stack and keep going. Yay. It's not right. I'm not getting needle inversion. I'm getting... I don't know what to call it, but it's not needle inversion. Something else is wrong. I need to debug this. There we go. I figured it out. It's running the 9.5 firmware with the 1.0 desktop software and the two can't communicate effectively because they use different protocols. So now I can at least get something. Something that uh, needle inverted. I just gotta work around that part. I filed a ticket. Um, I actually had a PR open for this to fix this in a different way before and I didn't realize that it was, I knew that it was broken. I, it was broken in a different way than I thought. We're, we're gonna fix it. Still broken. It's not right. It's not right. kind of weird failure mode. I'm not sure what's causing it. I might need to go and debug the firmware now. Okay, we're checking in. Um, I have still not fixed the inverted needle problem. I thought I knew what was going on. I don't know what's going on. And now I have encountered another problem, which appears to be related to the firmware. So occasionally I wind up in this odd failure mode where there's one needle at five selected and one needle at like seven on the other side selected and from my debugging i can tell that the desktop software is sending down the correct pixels which means that the firmware is not setting the correct pixels but i have not made any changes to the firmware so something's going on there and you decide what i want to do i think i'm going to take another crack at the inverted needle problem and ignore the firmware failure case for the moment and then come back to it later. <sighs> Debugging the firmware is hard because it's hard to add logging to the firmware because the Arduino is kind of functioning at the edge of what an Arduino is capable of. So when you add logging, it slows everything down to a crawl and it's hard to understand what's actually going on. So let me fix the desktop software first and then I will move on to the underlying issues with the firmware. Uh, but for now, I'm going to stop and get lunch because I will cease to function if I don't eat for too long. And I'll come back later. Okay, I've had lunch. I have some more coffee. And I'm going to turn the camera off for a while. I need some time to think. And I like to sing while I'm coding. And I don't want to... I don't have the time and energy to figure out if that's going to cause copyright issues, so we're just not going to include it in this video. 
I'll be back when I have anything to talk about that I understand. It's fixed. It's fixed. It took me like an hour. Um, I fixed the issue with the inverted needles instead of refactoring the color space so that the, the most common color is color zero. I refactored it so the, the lightest color is color zero and then we're selecting color one as the uh, needles that get selected for single bed, which is feral mode. Um, so it's fixed and then I had to fix the flanking needles, which is a new feature that they added in the 1.0 release where like if you have extra space outside, so like your pattern takes up say needle five to needle five, but you're knitting from needle 10 to needle 10, it'll pad that extra space with whatever the current selected color is. So that way you're in two color jacquard mode, like all your needles get selected correctly and you don't end up with like weird colors on the edges. It was just malfunctioning for Feral because apparently whoever built this didn't test Feral. Anyway, it's fixed now. Um, I double checked that it's fixed on the machine. I'm just writing some tests and then I'm going to mail out a PR with this fix and see what the maintainers think. They may like it, they may not like it, but it's fixed enough that I can use it and I can move on to the next step from here. This just further proves the value of taking a break and like letting things sit for a minute and then coming back and then immediately be able to fix them. It's worth it. PR is up. Does this have anything to do with what I set out to do? Not really, but it was in the way of me working on the next thing on the stack. So and now that I have popped this off the stack, I'm going to celebrate a bit, and then I'm going to move on to testing the potential fix for the drift issues with the carriage. This is just the way of things. This is all very exciting. We're building the Arduino firmware, and now we are pushing it to the Arduino. There we go. That click means it's working. And now we start up. Where's the command? Where's the command? Now we're going to start the desktop software. Now we're going to load up our image file. Knitting. That's not right. The failure condition in the firmware seems to happen when you move too far past the turn mark after the first beep, so I just need to be careful with that. With this fix applied, it looks like everything still works as expected, so I'm going to break out the garter carriage and let it run for a good 20 minutes while I do something else and then see if it winds up with the same kind of drift. Mass set up right now.
Did you hear that? The turnarounds are not in the right place. Let me see what's up. The turnaround is wrong because it's attacking the wrong carriage, which means that my original detection code is not working correctly. I need to go fix that. <laughs> I just popped something off the yak stack, and now I'm popping something back on the yak stack so I can go test all of this! While that's doing its thing, I just got a notification that the tests are failing for the desktop fixes for the needle inversion and the plenty of needles, so I'll look at this. Okay, so carrot detection was slightly broken, but Okay, so the firmware talks to the desktop software over USB. And in order to make those messages more efficient, they are encoded down to the smallest possible message size. So we know that when we get a message, this byte means this thing, and this byte means this thing, and this byte means this thing. So the translation between those bytes and something that we can understand and print out as logs happens in a particular part of the desktop Python. And they were mapping the carriages wrong. They were off by one, indexing starting at one instead of indexing starting at zero. I thought I'd fix this before, but I don't know, maybe my repo was slightly out of date or something is in the wrong state. Anyway, it should be fixed now. We are now detecting the right carriage and we are now reporting the right carriage and it all should be correct. And we'll see if the drift problem persists, I'm gonna get the carriage back up and running. <laughs> Alright, let's see if it knits in the right place. It's knitting in the right place. <laughs> the turnaround beats are still coming too early. Uh, I'm not sure what's up with that, but I'm gonna let this run for, I don't know, 20 minutes and see if there's any drifts and come back to it. Wait, when things work. We're now on what, day three of this? Um, <laughs> intros, talking, it is, it is morning. Um, I'm mostly awake, I'm somewhat functional. I ran a long test of the garter carriage last night and didn't see any problems with drift. And I will insert some b-roll of what the drift looks like and then what the my swatch looks like. This is a swatch that I made before with the drift problems. You can see that after about a dozen rows we wind up with these duplicated stitches and they're off to the right farther than they should be. And that happens pretty consistently. Uh, these are a handful of different tests. Um, this is my test swatch from last night and as you can see Nothing is drifting. The goal of this was not to fix the garter carriage issues. This is just a side effect. Now that the drift is fixed, that means I can move on to other things. But while I am fairly convinced that the drift problem is fixed, I need to run a larger test and a longer test to make sure that I haven't missed something. So I'm going to get that set up on the machine and just let the garter carriage run for a good, probably an hour, more than an hour, depending on how big the swatch is. And while I'm doing that, I will work on other things. Part of doing this is that I want to be able to share it. Like I want everyone else to be able to use this too, but I'm working in the 1.0 release of AYAB and the current public release of AYAB is the 0.95 release. They were working towards a 1.0 release several years ago and then various people dropped out of the project so they never got around to actually releasing it. In order to fully launch this project we have to get to the point where we can do a 1.0 release of AYAB. That's a different kind of problem. Software is easy but doing a big software release is a human problem. We have to organize the people and figure out what needs to be done to get it to release and then I don't know what the release process is and in a previous life I was an engineering manager so I know how to tackle these problems. I just don't know if I have the time and energy to do it as part of a hobby. So 
I might check in with the community and see what's up and see if someone else can lead the effort. While the big longer test is running, I'm going to spend that time putting together a doc for the person who does most of the software testing for AYAV also happens to run my local machine knitting meetup and she has requested information about how to run this pre-release software because in the past developers have just handed her like, here's the latest build, go test it and see what's up. But I'm going to put together a doc for her to explain how to check out the source code and how to build and install the firmware so that she can test these things as they come in and not need like a binary drop. And that will get us closer to actually releasing these things. <laughs> I'm going to organize my thoughts about how to explain what this fix is actually doing and the way that I was thinking about it is entirely wrong, which is, it's always great to see. Like, I didn't, I will explain. I will explain, but we'll get there. Okay, checking in from the long test, it appears to be okay. The pattern hasn't shifted, but it sounded like some of the turnarounds were getting further and further to the left, which is different because they're getting further and further to the right before. So I'm going to run a different long test with a simpler pattern to see if I can see any small changes and figure out what's up. It's possible that we have fixed one problem only to encounter another that was hidden by the first problem, but that's, that's why we test things. We'll figure it out. It is day something it is the next day from the last day that I Let's make it day three or day four. Counting is hard. Numbers are meaningless. Time is meaningless. It is a different day. My long large scale test went well. I didn't see any drift. I did have one line that didn't have any pattern information, but that is a different problem. And I want to see if I can reproduce that because it took several hours to get to that point. I'm comfortable calling this fixed and I'm really excited about that. And I finally wrapped my head around how to explain how this one line of code fixes this problem. The way that AYAB works is it's an Arduino with some custom hardware on top of that to connect the sensors from the machine to the Arduino so that we can talk to them. And one of those things that we're connected to is a clock line, which is called the clock line because it goes up and down like a clock in a regular cadence. And the clock line goes up and down as you move the carriage across the bed. We have two functions attached to that clock line. There's one when the clock line goes high and there's one when the clock line goes low. When the clock line goes high, we look at the sensor values and figure out which direction you're headed in. Double checking, double checking. You know, looking at this, this code could be... I looked at it to understand what was going on and realized that it could probably refactor it and be a little better, but anyway. So when the clock line goes high, we look at anything happening when you're moving to the right. When the clock line goes low, we look at anything happening when you're moving to the left. There's one little check when the clock line goes high to see which direction you're headed in. And this one line fix also adds that check to when you're moving to the left. So the drift was being caused because we were missing a little bit of information when the clock line goes low. And that just compounded over time when you're running many times back and forth with the garter carriage. And I love to see this kind of thing. When I saw this problem, I immediately jumped to there must be something fundamentally wrong with the way that the firmware is interacting with the Arduino system. And I was looking for like these big, subtle problems. But ultimately, the fix was we're missing a little bit of information in this one function call. So I'm, I'm really happy to see that. I'm really happy to see that there's like a nice, elegant solution to this. Is this explanation useful? I don't know, I don't know. Um, anyway, it's fixed. I need to end this video here or it's just gonna go on for weeks and weeks and we will never get to an ending point. So I'm going to wrap up the code that I have in progress. I, there were some minor fixes I needed to make for the garter carriage in the firmware, I'll send out that PR and then I'll finish up this doc for uh, our software testing people because other people are requesting it too. They, like nobody knows how to <laughs> nobody knows how to install the 1.0 firmware. I found it through trial and error. Um, so I'll put together this doc and wrap up this video and like edit everything and we'll be good.
the day got away from me. I was trying to clean up some of the minor workarounds I added into the firmware to get the garter carriage oven running that made me realize that if I left them in, you wouldn't be able to use multiple carriages in the same piece because you'd always get stuck in garter carriage mode. And in doing that, I found a larger issue with the finite state machine that runs the whole knitter that I'm trying to fix. And I just, I realized I need to end this here because if I don't end this here, it's just gonna be three, four hours long and nobody's gonna watch that. Um, so <laughs> thanks for getting to this point. Um, thanks for coming along for the ride. There's going to be more of this, so subscribe to be notified when the next chunks of it are ready. Um, and let me know what you think of the format, because this is something new and different for me, and I don't always know if the things that happen in my head translate well to other people understanding what's going on, so let me know if you have any questions about what I'm doing or why, and I will get to them in the next vlog video thing. It is really hard to share this kind of thing um, because so much of it happens in my head and I'm not great at talking about it in ways that other people understand, but I think this might work. We're gonna find out. Uh, thanks for watching. Happy knitting.